everyone, it's Sevi. Spiral Abyss Floor 11 and 12 have been updated, so of course I'm bringing you a guide. This is a long one, so let's jump straight in. First are some general notes. Have units that are sufficiently built or invested in since this is more of a DPS check than the previous cycle. Then you want to have a team rotation that will guide your flow of battle. The tips I'll give here will mostly be strategy and positioning tips that any team can utilize. I will still give general team tips, but these are just personal recommendations. Adapt your teams according to what you have. Some units might make it easier like animo crowd controllers against enemy mobs, but you can still make it work without them, albeit potentially with longer clear times. If you see units on my team that you have 5 star equivalents of, then use those as they can potentially make your fights quicker or easier. You can always reset or come back to a chamber to change your team or build units if needed, so don't get too obsessed with forcing yourself to clear a specific chamber fast if it's really, really difficult. Starting with Floor 11 team suggestions, since you have cryo enemies in the first half, you generally want a pyro DPS, the most accessible of which is, of course, Shangling. If you can, you'll likely want a healer for the Rift Towns in Chamber 3. My team of choice for the second half is a freeze team, as you'll want to disable the enemies here a lot. Starting with Chamber 1, take your time here since this is about protecting the monolith's health. Animal crowd controllers are very helpful here, so bring them if you have them and you'll have a much easier time in the first chamber. AoE units should also fare well. Starting off, three hilly trills will spawn in front of you, while a mitotril will spawn to your left. One thing to note is that the mitotril will only target you, but the hilly trills automatically target the monolith. So what I do is deal with the hilly trills first since they are the monolith's threat. Kill any new hilly trill that spawns. Then new mitotrills trills will spawn one by one. As long as you aggro them or stay in front of them, they will target you instead of the monolith. When they charge you, make sure your back isn't facing the monolith, or else the mitotril trill might end up too close to it. The last thing to spawn will be the huge Geo Churl, which should also target you if you aggro it. The safest thing to do is edge bait it by having your back to the wall and kill it there so it won't wander towards the monolith. But as long as you're not near the monolith anyway, it should be fine. In the second half, the Nobushi spawn in front of you, and ranged potion throwing treasure hoarders spawn behind you. The potioneers are more important to kill first or disable, since their potions deal damage over time to the monolith. The enemies here are pretty persistent in targeting the monolith, so a freeze team will help stop them in their tracks once they get too close. Having characters that can stagger or crowd control the enemies can also help if you have the units. At the very least, you have Animo Traveler. But in general, if you're using a freeze team like I did, it's easier to let the enemies come a bit closer to the target so that you can freeze them all in your AoE and kill them quickly that way. Although this half isn't timed, killing them as fast as possible will prevent them from hitting the monolith a lot. Rain outlines your fate. Witness it. Submit for judgment. I'm out of here. To the fairy. Yeah. The wrong fight. <laughs> Then the Kairagi at the end will target you, so you can just deal with it away from the monolith. Know my sword. Rain cutter. Rain outlines your fate. From whence you came! Yeah. On to Chamber 2. First are three Mita Churls with ice shields. I run backwards away so that when they charge at me, they'll end up in the same center point together. Then deal with them simultaneously, but stay where you are. <laughs> After the Mitotrills are dead, the Lawatrill and Cryo Mage spawn. At that point, you should be near the Lawatrill, and what will happen is the Cryo Mage will teleport towards you, and both of them will be side by side for easier targeting. 
The Cryolawa Churl has certain attack patterns you can note. Its first Hulk Smash will start triggering the ice floor spikes which can stagger you. After jumping, its next Hulk Smash will create an ice field with a lot of damage over time. So it's really just easier to get away from the Lawa Churl till it's done with those. After it dashes, it should stop with the cryo fields and will be easier to kill. I frame its attacks with dashes or burst animations if you want to kill it faster without having to run away. In the second half, the Fatui spawn in a group of four first. Your two cryo units come in handy here to freeze the Hydro Fatui and weaken the Electro Fatui. So unleashing all your AoE attacks while the Fatui are clumped together will kill them fast. Then, Mirror Maiden spawns on the other side. With a freeze team, it's pretty easy to keep the Mirror Maiden in one place. She is pretty tanky though, so try to keep her frozen before she teleports elsewhere. Swift and merciful, back from whence you came! Come on out! Submit for judgment! Bye. In Chamber 3, starting with Rift Hounds, the small ones spawn first. Here, run all the way forward to the edge of the arena and once again edge bait till they're all clumped together. That's when you can start doing your skills and bursts. Animal test, then the last two big ones spawn after. You can do the same and wait for them to teleport towards you at the edge. Or you can charge towards one already and wait for the other to just naturally approach. I think the most important thing is just to battle them at the edge of the map where they'll keep charging into the wall ideally. This way they won't spread out too much in the open field. Though these are Geo Rift Towns, there's no need to bring a Geo character as they can be killed quickly enough by any well-invested team. Let's light it up! In the second half, the Electro Lawatrol appears first. I run backwards to let it come towards me since this is where the bishops will spawn, which is convenient. What's tough is that its Electro Armor is up and so it can't be frozen, but you can wear down that Electro Armor with elemental attacks, with Cryo doing the most damage to the armor. Once that's gone, it can be frozen. There's a chance it will charge you, so try to place yourself between the lava churl and the wall so that it will once again get edge baited. Then, Bathysmal bishops will spawn. You can focus fire on just one of them since the other will come near you anyway, but here you mostly want to dodge and iframe their attacks because you can get staggered a lot. You also have the ice flower cage that stops you from moving, so be alert about those. Now on to floor 12 with some general notes. Having a healer or shielder for both teams is very welcome. AoE DPSs for the first half are useful since you face mobs here, and crowd control wouldn't hurt to group the annoying enemies together. Pyro is also very welcome to counter the cryo, whopper flowers, and slimes. For the second half, bring out your best single target DPS team. Starting with Chamber 1 first half, after activating the challenge, run back immediately. This is to make the Whopper Flowers teleport where the next enemies will respawn so you don't have to run back and forth. The annoying thing is they are prone to being thrown around which can cause them to be separated and harder to kill together. What I do is make sure they're always facing me so that any attacks from me that launch them will end up with them still in front of me. Gotcha. Take it easy. Huh? I'm going in. Absorption test. Stand clear. Nice and spicy. Eat this. Quiet. Here comes the cash. 
when the Geo Bishops spawn, run towards them, but go past and have your back to the wall. This is to taunt them to jump towards you at the edge of the map, where you can more easily damage them. It's alright if you take close to 2 minutes on this half since if you have an invested DPS and team in the second half, it should be fairly quick. It's pretty straightforward here, just a matter of killing the ruined bosses as fast as possible, which spawn one by one. If you have a well-built team with the right rotation, it'll ideally take only one rotation each to kill. In the meantime, be careful of the rolling stones, as those can easily kill you if you take all its damage unshielded. Make sure you can avoid the enemy's attacks and or have a strong shield. While you're killing the Ruin Grader, try to be conscious of saving energy and charging your bursts so that you're ready to face Magu Kenki in the next chamber. If you have a lot of seconds remaining, you can even take some time to keep generating particles before finishing it off. Motion to compel. In Chamber 2, I run immediately in front to the edge so that the Mitotrills will come charging towards me and they'll be positioned by the Cryo Slimes where you can deal AoE damage when they're together. Here, I prefer prioritizing the Cryo Slimes as their Cryo application and attacks can be very annoying. But try as much as possible to damage multiple enemies simultaneously for efficiency. Then, when the next slime and lava churl spawn, you can try killing the slime quickly as long as you can dodge, iframe, or shield against the churl. Or, keeping in mind the cryo lava churl's attack pattern, you can also choose to bait the slime away till the churl is done with its smashes. Either way, keep dodging and kill them as quickly as possible. On the second half, it's another DPS check. While Magu Kenki is standing up, you can hit him with skills to generate particles if your bursts aren't charged, but note it won't trigger SAC weapon's passives. When he's done, do your rotation and dodge or shield his slashes and mask throw thingies. If you stay in his melee range, he should stay put and you can just keep whacking. He then has an invulnerability state around 3 fourths of his health where he'll do a large AoE attack. You can either iframe dodge this or move far away. Get at melee range if you're far away and make sure his back is against the wall because after that, he's going to dash backwards. This way, he'll dash to the wall where you can easily corner him. Then just stay in melee range and beat him up until you're done. If he dashes away or into the open field, that would be inconvenient, but you can just keep chasing him and save your bursts if you can corner him to the edge again. Let me weave you Look at you, Boozel! Oz, reveal the motion to compel! Now for Chamber 3. Right away, I run all the way past the bishops to the edge again. They should launch their energy drain attack, which you should dodge. Then they'll swim towards you, which makes no sense because there's no water around, but whatever. Then, when you're all at the edge of the map, face them together and let loose with your talents. Just keep hugging the edge to make sure they don't spread too far or into the open field. On the second half, it's another DPS check here, so stick to your rotations as best as you can. If the Ruin boss ascends into the air, wait for it to go down and you can activate a character's burst when it drops down to iframe the damage. Time for your arraignment. Rain outlines your fate. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me weave you up. Yeah, they are special. Huh? My royal incinerate. 
when it enters its shielded invulnerable state, which is around 45 seconds in or when it's at 25% HP, the four smaller ruin monsters spawn around it. Look for the one with the ring as that's the one you need to kill to make the boss vulnerable again. These four have their own individual patterns, some of which are easier than the others. The one which looks like a crab generates shields and is the most annoying because of its protection and high health pool. If you're against it, you can either brute force or just reset the chamber. There's also the triangle Dorito looking one which dashes away from you. You can exploit its dash by placing yourself on the outer edge of the field, making it dash towards the main boss so that when you kill it, you're already beside the main boss. Anyway, once the mini boss is dead, just go back to the ruined boss which will be stunned for a while. Ideally, you'll have your skills and bursts up to deal the most amount of damage while it's stunned and since its resistances are also lowered. Then just repeat until it's dead. And that's the end of the abyss. Feel free to tell me down in the comments how you did or how you feel about this abyss cycle. And if this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!